what is going on everyone welcome back to another video in my design guide series so this is where i cover circuits that aren't quite complicated and big enough to warrant their own ee projects video but i still want to go over the circuits mechanism mechanism of action and give some in-depth in guides to selecting component values so the one we're going to be talking about today is going to be the rcd snubber as you probably guessed, RCD stands for resistor capacitor diode. And if you look at this diagram I have right here that shows the application of an RCD snubber, you'll see here's the resistor, the capacitor, and the diode. And so what we're looking at here is your typical flyback converter. You see you have the transformer right here, and you have the MOSFET right here. Also shown in this circuit are the, the parasitic elements of each of our components, right? So if you watch my MOSFET gate drive circuit notes, I would introduce the concept of, of parasitic components, of imperfections in components that we as engineers have to deal with because it affects the operation of our circuit, right? So as we know, a MOSFET isn't just a MOSFET. It's a MOSFET with some capacitors attached between a bunch of different pins, right? Um, and a transformer, is not a perfect transformer. It has what is known as leakage inductance, which is just acts like this. You can represent it as an inductor in series right here with our MOSFET, right? And so these two components combined, as you know, if, if this goes unchecked, right, it just creates an infinite oscillation, right? The capacitor charges the inductor, the inductor charges the capacitor, back and forth and back and forth, and it's just infinite infinite amounts of ring and so what this ends up doing is it puts a lot of unnecessary stress on our rectifier diodes it puts a lot of unnecessary stress on our mosfet right could get high voltage spikes high current spikes and it also causes emi problems so there are tons of reasons why you'd want to limit dampen the ringing of um on the uh, from on the uh, drain the source side of the MOSFET, right? Um, and so that's that's what the job of the RCD snubber is to do, is, is whenever you use one of these, it's supposed to to dampen the ringing, a lot like the gate drive circuit was supposed to, actually. It's its job is to dampen the ringing, and it provides all those benefits that I just mentioned before, is it increases the life, reduces stress on components, and it reduces our EMI. So scrolling down, we'll just get into the component values. Like I said, there's only three components here, so it's a pretty simple circuit, but there are some decently complicated um, equations that we need to cover. So I said a quick summary, parasitic components create a ringing across the drain to source pins of the MOSFET. We need to create a circuit to dampen that ringing, and I said that's where we start using CSN, RSN, and DSN. So that's where these three come in. So, let us start by calculating how much power we need to dissipate PSN. Because if you remember, if you see the way you dampen ringing when you have one of those oscillating circuits where you have a capacitor and inductors, you throw a resistor in there, and the resistor's job is to dampen that ringing, right? So um, we need to first start out by calculating our resistance value. And so we kind of do that in a bit of a roundabout way, but I'll just walk you through the steps. So first we want to calculate how much power the resistor has to dissipate. So power can be calculated by one half L I squared. So this actually should look pretty familiar with, with if you're familiar with calculating the um, amount of energy in an inductor, that is where this equation comes from. One half L I squared, we know en power is just energy per unit of time. So um, then we're going to be multiplying by VSN divided by VSN minus NVO times FS, right? So here's, I have all the variables labeled here. VSN is just V snubber, so that's just the voltage, right? If you look at VSN as the voltage drop across our capacitor and our resistor, right? Because those are in parallel, right? So we are um, sort of approximating or just, uh, like I said, estimating VSN, and we're going to set VSN to be 2 to 2.5 times NVO. NVO is NPS times V out, right? So VO is V out. NPS is our primary secondary winding. Um, so you need to know that in, in the context of whatever your transformer is, you need to know what the primary secondary winding. I think 10 is a pretty common number. 
Um, the next thing is we need to know the leakage inductance. So one problem you might have is if you're, if you're designing a flyback from scratch, you might not have a transformer picked out yet. You might have a custom transformer, right? And so you might not have reached out to the application engineer, say at Worth Electronic or something to design your transformer. So what you need to do is just assume a value here. And what I do is industry standards are usually that they're able to get our leakage inductance is uh, at max 3% of our primary inductance, right? Going up here, leakage inductance is this value right here. This is like the quote unquote uh, parasitic inductance, right? And so what we're kind of assuming that value to be is no greater than 3% of our primary inductance. And we calculated our primary inductance if we're, you know, designing a flyback converter. So we will have already known our primary inductance. And then IP is the primary peak current, which also is found during the design stage of a flyback converter. So we need to have sort of made progress with our flyback converter before we start we need to have a flyback converter basically before we can put a snubber on it kind of makes sense um so like i said i peak will have already been calculated so we already have known this value and approximate this value we know these values and then we can approximate that value right so looking at this all right we know that we can calculate rsn so um e equals v squared over r and so we know V snub, so we just do V squared, and then over P, it's gonna give calculate R, right? So like, I don't know if that was obvious, but so we have V squared over R, so then we just mul cross multiply, so we multiply the R over and divide by P, and we have this value for P, so we know that R snub is equal to one half times this whole quantity, which is the same thing, right? And then FS is switching frequency of our um, flyback controller. All right, so it's usually like 100 kilohertz, 105, 110 kilohertz. So um, scrolling down, now we need to calculate the, the value for our capacitor. So this will spit out an actual resist, resistor value for you. Um, and so then next thing like I said, like I said, we can go into our capacitor. So the capacitor is calculated by VSN, which we've already established what this that value is, divided by delta VSN. So we usually want to set delta VSN to about 10%. Um, so delta VSN is equal to 0.1 times VSN, right? So I don't know if that, that's as clear as I want it to be. So what you do, in order to figure out this value down here, you take VSN and multiply it by, say, whatever your delta value. If you, want, if you're, you pick the delta, but then the quantity, this is not equal 0.1. This equals 0.1 times VSN. Right, because delta VSN is, is a, a number, um, not like a percentage. Right, and then we've already calculated RSN, and then we already know our switching frequency. So that spits us out a value for our capacitor, right? And the last note I have here is for the diode. I just said make sure that the peak reverse max of our diode needs to be greater than the Vn max times square root of two. So say you're doing a universal AC input, which has a maximum input voltage of 265 volts, then you're looking at 375 volts on your peak reverse max. Now the last note that I want to touch on here is that, okay, so this power, so remember your resistor is dissipating this much power. All right, which means you need to you need to select an appropriate value for that. Now this could be something like one watt, two watts, which is a very big value for resistors to dissipate. Okay, so what is it? Make sure whenever you're sourcing a resistor, like say this comes out to be a hundred ohms, you need to find a hundred ohm like two watt resistor. Okay, which is a, it's a very it's a that's a huge resistor, um, like in terms of actual size, right? Because it needs to dissipate a lot of power. Now, one pro leak strat you can do looking up at this is you can put resistors in parallel, right? To sort of distribute the load across multiple. So you have like, say you have, um, say you need to dissipate one watt of power. What you can do is take two half watt resistors and put them in parallel, and then they each only have to dissipate one half, half a watt of power, right? Um, each. And then they'll be able to dissipate the full amount of power necessary in order to, you know, dampen the ringing and stuff like that. 
So that's just one one strategy you can use. Um, so yeah, like I said, the, it's a simple circuit. Um, that's pretty much all you need to know when selecting these values. And this this circuit can be further validated through testing after you design it, but you know this is just a good idea for initially selecting components. Um, so yeah, so if you like this video, please drop a like. If you didn't like it, then drop a dislike. That helps me just as much. Um, if you want to see more videos related to electrical engineering and stuff like this, then subscribe so you get video notifications. I'll be doing a ton of projects on this channel where I literally say, okay, we want to design like an iPhone charger. And I show you from that from the ground up, like from idea to manufacture, how do we get there? Um, so yeah, um, thank you so much.